Hi, everybody. Welcome to Self Love Webinar. Holy cow, have I been learning a lot the last couple of weeks <laughs> about self love, about myself, about my expectations, about what I accept, what I fool myself with. And um, wow. Um, it's been quite of an experience for me. If you've read my um, book, Timelines and Parallel Universes, um, you've heard stories about my friend Vicky's. We had a past life connection where he sacrificed himself. I killed myself and then um, just made a mess of my life. And um, when I met him a couple years ago, I felt this major connection with him. Went and hung out with him a couple times. Last year, went and hung out with him again. And um, huge connection, but just wasn't sure in all these mixed energies. And when he left, I felt totally brokenhearted. And um, so I started doing some searching and, and connecting and in healing on myself. And that's how the whole book, Timelines and Parallel Universes, came about, was that healing. And I'm so thankful for that. And um, we've been talking on and off um, since Christmas. And I kept telling them, just friends, just friends, just friends. And then we're talking. And me being lost within myself, not knowing where I belong, not knowing where to live. I thought he had the answers. I was gonna take off to um, Thailand and he says, come to Mexico. So I came to Mexico and within two days, he's all, you're so powerful. He says, your energy so powerful. I wanna go home. <laughs> and I went off. <laughs> And said, no, you're responsible for me. You brought me here. <laughs> and then, um, so we come over here to Progresso. And it's been such a learning, you know. I wanted him to save me. I wanted him to have the answers. I wanted him to love me. And he told me, I don't love you. And I got mad. And I yelled. I went off on him a couple nights ago like I've never gone off on anybody in my whole life. And you know what? Everybody is an actor in our play. Everybody is reflecting to us what we're supposed to learn and what we're supposed to do. And you know what? I don't love him either. Truly, I love him as a friend. He's amazing. We have an amazing connection. But that deep felt love that you're supposed to have when you're in love, it's not there. I want it to be there. I wanted it to be there. I wanted it to be my answer. I wanted it to be my savior. You know? I wanted this to be it. I had warning signs. I was told. I was asked questions. And I ignored every single one of them. Because I wanted to be saved. And, you know, for the last seven and a half years, I have been running. Ever since I've been working online and have had money to travel, I've been everywhere. Well, not everywhere yet. <laughs> everywhere and nowhere. Not feeling like I have a home. Not even knowing where I want to live. I have no clue where I want to live. I mean, if I were to choose, I'd be living in Glastonbury, England. That's where I would live. But at this point, it's not an option. 
I'm allowed to be there for six months of the year. I don't want to live in Florida. I don't want to live in Oregon. I don't want to live in California. Do I want to live in Mexico? I don't know. I was willing to. <laughs> Is it really what I want? I have no clue. Because I don't think I really know what love is. I don't think I know what it means to really love myself. And how can we attract somebody in our lives to mirror love to us when we don't mirror love to ourselves? You know, I was pissed when Vicky brought me back here. I wanted to be the victim. I wanted to make him a liar. But he's just as lost as I am. So how can I play that game? Is that real? Is that fair? Of course it's not fair. And when I'm truly honest with myself it's like I don't really know that I know what love is I mean I had my first love I have felt broken hearted but have I truly loved myself so that's what this is about we have to really love ourselves we sacrifice ourselves we crucify ourselves we let people through our boundaries and to take advantage of us because we don't have self-love if you have self-love you have the power to say no you have the power to say this isn't good for me you don't bend you don't pretend You don't accept any abuse from anybody because any abuse from anybody is abusing yourself because, again, they're actors in your movie. They are reflecting to you what you are feeling. And I've got to tell you, man, I've had men in my life that could really love me, and I pushed them away. Why would I push a beautiful man away that could really love me? Because I didn't have love for myself. How could I allow someone else to love me if I don't love myself? And as long as you don't truly and completely love yourself, you will never, ever let love in. From anybody from friends, from work, from mates. You will mistreat yourself. You won't take care of yourself properly. <clears throat> you know, it's so much easier not to be awake. It's so much easier to play the victim. You know, my sister, who I use a lot in my teachings because she's such a great teacher for me, she's living in a rehab of, um, for people with medical conditions. And when I said, you know, Cindy, if you get better, I'll take you wherever you want to go. And she says, I love it here. I get to exercise two days a week. I'm always laughing. I get lots of attention. People make themselves sick for attention. To be taken care of, to be loved. How does that help anybody? And how does that help yourself? There's a lot of um, suicidal energies in the vibration of the planet. And this first part I'm going to give away free before we start doing the individual recordings. So um, it's a vibration. It's, it's like a radio station. 
and there's a lot of people plugged into it right now. A lot of people plugged into suicidal energy. I'm seeing it constantly on the uh, on all the sites. You know, I feel suicidal help pray for me or my son just committed suicide. You know, and it's a vibration that's going on in the planet. It is a control vibration. It is put there. But we could rise above it, you guys. So I want to do a clearing on that for people that are suicidal. I'm going to keep this on this one recording, and then I'm going to give this away free. So um, if you have suicidal thoughts or anybody, just send them love right now, and let's rise above this energy, and then I'll start doing the recordings. And um, as I promised, my friend Vicky's is going to be playing the flute while I'm silent. So I'm going to allow him to come in and, and play for us. So here I go. Okay, you guys, I'm going to um, stop this now, and then we'll start the, the webinar. Tamara, it's Suzanne. I just Tamara, wanted I'm hearing you. Oh, okay. What happened? Are you okay, go ahead, Suzanne. I just wanted to tell you how grateful we are <clears throat> that you could share that with us with such, you know, honesty and vulnerability because it helps so many people on this call that are can so relate to what you're talking about and it helped me very much also good and, I'm, and we, I'm happy and we, to be of service and we love you for what you know just going through this experience and walking through it step by step and sharing it with us every step of the way it's very raw and authentic and there can't, there can't be anything better than that to help everybody do the same. Yeah, and it really sucks, too, I got to tell you. <laughs> and, it, and it sucks because we're all walking through a version of this right now. Yeah. We are. So I love you. Bless you. Thank you, Suzanne. Love you, too, sweetie. 
Would anybody else like to share before we move on or questions? Go ahead, Lisa. Hi. Um, Hi, sweetie. Yeah, living with um, suicide and the fear of it in my family has been pretty brutal. We were lucky that uh, my one daughter survived and has decided that even though it's an obvious option, it's not one she's willing to take at this point. <laughs> um, and just, yeah, recognizing how heavy the weight of that is for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's something I, I didn't even talk about. I mean, I was brought, to, I had to do the suicidal thing. I was talking to um, Vicki Zoll earlier about an old boyfriend of mine that committed suicide. And, you know, I almost committed suicide in the early 2000s. I was on bipolar medication. I swear to God, I called my ex-husband. I said, you're doing better with the kids now. I can't deal with this. I got to get out of here. And I went to drive off a cliff. And I turned my car around, and that was the beginning of my healing. Wow. My son, Kyle, who's living in Florida, you know, used to be a heroin addict, used to be everything. I mean, he was doing everything. And um, last March or, or April or I don't, it's this year. What's well, not last year? Um, he was overwhelmed. His girlfriend became pregnant. He has child support for two different kids with two different women. He had to move out of his house. All this shit was going on. He went and bought some heroin. And his girlfriend came home and he was purple. And the paramedics revived him, got up to the hospital. The hospital revived him. And after his kidneys were shutting down and everything. And um, I got this message. He was pissed off at me because I kicked him out of California and sent him back to Florida because <laughs> he was being abusive. So he hadn't really been talking to me much. But I got a message in Facebook after not talking to him for a couple months. And he said, I'm sorry, Mom. And I went, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, and um, he wasn't dealing with his probation and stuff. So he turned himself in at the day after he got out of the hospital. First, he went and got really drunk and then um, turned himself in and um, – and he opted for the full term instead of getting out on probation. Thank God. So he's going to be in until February, which has given him an opportunity to deal with himself and get clean. You know, there's so many of us that the easy way out is suicide or just being drunk all the time. I mean, how else, you know, we run away from our feelings. You know, we use alcohol, we use drugs, we use pills. The other day I took a half a Xanax. I normally only take an eighth to a quarter of one when I fly on a 12-hour flight and because I get so anxious. And when I got in that argument with Vicky's, I took a half of one. And, man, I was I, – I might still be hungover. I don't know. <laughs> but it just stays in your body, and I don't understand how people can live on that. But people live on that stuff because they are running away, because they're not able to deal with their emotions and their feelings. So, you know, instead of using drugs, use love. I mean, drugs are fun once in a while, a little mushroom or some alcohol it can be a lot of fun. But it, when you use it to escape, that, what good does that do anybody? You know what I mean? So anyways, thank you guys. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the individual activations now. I think we're done. Does anybody else want to talk before um, I start recording? And you guys, I can't read the chat. Well, um, it, it'll totally throw me off. So I love the comments. I'll read them later. Suzanne's here and she'll help me do that, but I can't because it throws me off. So sending you all a lot of love. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and start it, and then um, we'll get going here. <laughs> 